I want to say to you visitors that are here, boy, we are thrilled that you're here, but I want you to come back and hear my son, our pastor. He'll be back with us next week, and it's just so important that you hear him. You have to hear his dad today. Uh, however, now, uh, he's only 50, what is he, 55 or something like that. How old is he? 55, yeah, you don't even know? His wife doesn't even know. <laughs> and I'm 84, so you got to hear the old man today. But you can come back and hear the enthusiastic young man next Sunday. I hope you will. God bless you. Now, I want you to turn. Uh, now, if I, if I was on my knees and God spoke to my heart and gave me the message from the Scripture, is it worth you hearing at all? Even if I go over just a little bit of time, I'm not saying I will, but just in case I do, I, I handwrite out everything God gives me. It's all written, uh, handwritten and all. And sometimes I can't even read my own writing. But I want you to listen to me on purpose because what God gave me, I want to give to you. And then that's, that's like God given to you then what he gave to me. So. Open your Bibles to two places to get us started, and I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 45 and verse number 23 when we get there, Isaiah 45 and verse number 23, Isaiah 45, verse number 23, and then I want you to find in your Bible, because we're going to look at it, Philippians chapter 2 in the New Testament, Philippians chapter 2. Now, if you can, on purpose, erase anything that you're thinking about now and listen to this message, I really do believe it'll honestly help you and change your life and maybe even give you some safety in the days ahead. Amen. Listen to it on purpose. God gave it to me to give to you. I want you to hear it. In Isaiah chapter 45, we're going to read verse number 23. And you don't need to stand. I'll read it, and then you can sit there and follow along with me. Then we'll go over to, uh, like I said, we'll go over to Philippians after I read this verse. Verse 23. It says, I have sworn by myself the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness. Notice that. The word has gone out of my mouth, Isaiah says, in righteousness and shall not return. Watch this, that unto me every knee, this is speaking of the Lord, unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. The word swear is the same word that's used over in Philippians as confess. So turn over to Philippians and look at chapter number 2 and follow along with me as I begin reading in verse 9 and believe what you're about to read right here. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Amen. Now that's talking about God speaking about Jesus. Amen. That he has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Verse 10. That at the name of Jesus... Every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Unusual title and maybe an unusual message, but a truthful message. My title is simply Jesus you are about to have your day. Jesus, you are about to have your day. Now, Father, bless, I pray, as I present this message, I pray that somebody will have the Holy Spirit of God speak to their heart in such a way it'll change them today about this truth. Help me now, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> Today, nearly everything, everywhere, and everyone is anti-God. 
anti-Bible, anti-Christian, and anti-church, and anti-spiritual anything. But today, the only true Bible, the King James Bible, the only one, that Bible today is rejected, it's denied, it's abused, it's misused, it's ridiculed, it's mocked, it's laughed at, it's ignored, it's disobeyed, and falsely printed of other versions. Today, the only true church, the old-fashioned fundamental independent Baptist church as we are, the only true church is neglected, is forsaken, is attacked by the liberals, it's attacked by the modernists, it's attacked by the charismatics, it's attacked by the neo-evangelicals, it's attacked by the Protestants, it's attacked by the Catholics, and it's attacked by all the cults. So we have those against the Bible, we have those against the church, and today the only true pastors, which are God's men, they are criticized, they are disrespected, they are rejected, they're called dictators. They're even said to be unloving. They're said to be uncaring. They're said to be bigoted. They're said to be talked and gossiped about. And they're slandered and unheeded and unheard. But thank God we have preachers that are unafraid. Today, the only Bible doctrine, the true Bible doctrine, the King James Bible doctrine, is thrown down on the streets and today is the day that they will not endure sound doctrine just like the Bible says. You're living in that day. So my title is Jesus, you're about to have your day where one day the true Bible is and the true church is and true pastors are and true Bible doctrine is and you, Jesus, are going to be honored. You're going to be glorified. You're going to be, you're going to be put in the position of worship. You are going to have your day. And Lord, you're the master. You're the creator. You're the God. You're the owner of everything that ever was or ever will be. Jesus, you are the owner. Listen to this. Just because, now listen carefully. Just because he didn't give a copyright to the songs that the birds sing, he's the owner of the birds. And just because he didn't brand the cattle on, uh, on the thousand hills, he's the owner of the cattle. And just because he didn't carve his initials out there on Pike's Peak, he's the owner. And just because he didn't put up a no trespassing sign on all the medals and on all the owners, he is the owner. And just because there's no trespassing sign on the oceans or on the fields or on the lakes or on anything else that's on this earth, he, Jesus, is the owner. And just because he does not ration to you and me the fresh air that we breathe and enjoy the soft breezes that blow, He's the owner of the air, and he's the owner of the breezes, and he's the owner of the atmosphere. Jesus is the owner. All things were made by him and for him. He is the owner. And just because the astronauts came back and said they didn't find his footprints in the moon dust, he was there. He's the owner. And just because we one of these days may get close enough to see Mars or Jupiter or Pluto. And if we see it and we don't see those big galaxies in orbit and we don't see God's fingerprints on them, let me just tell you, he's been there. He made them. He owns them. Amen. Jesus is the owner. And now let me tell you this. Just because he does not send you and me a notice saying, rent due, 
be assured, we're camping on his property. He's the owner where your house is. He's the owner where you live. He's the owner of everything. Jesus is the owner. We breathe his air and spend his time, and he's the owner of the complete earth. The old hymn says, and it's my wife's favorite hymn, and it says, My father is rich in houses and lands. He holdeth the wealth of the world in his hands, of rubies and diamonds, of silver and gold. His coffers are full and his riches untold. I'm a child of the king. I am a child of the king. Jesus, I just want to say in front of this crowd and to you, you are about to have your day. So let me give you the message. Jesus, you're about to have your day. And here's what's happened. We have seemingly put the doctrine of the rapture on the back burner, which that too is prophecy that we've set it aside because the Bible says that the hour that you think not, the Lord Jesus is going to come. But listen carefully to these Bible truths, and I'll give you just a little bit of prophecy. First of all, Jesus' first coming was to his own. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. So his first coming was to his own. The next coming in the clouds will be for his own. He came to his own. He's going to come for his own. And Jesus' third time to come to this earth will be with his own. He came to his own. He came, he's coming for his own, and he's going to come with his own. Here are the three appearings of Jesus as it applies to earth. Here are the three appearings. He came to Bethlehem to his own. He is coming in the air for his own. That's you and I that are saved. And his third time of coming, after seven years that he takes us out of here from in the air, his next coming is going to be with his own. We're coming back with him and set up the 1,000-year millennium. I'm giving you Bible right now, Bible truth. Some of you have heard it over and over again, and some of you actually believe it, but I want to tell you so, something. This is Bible prophecy. Here is the Bible truth and order of events of his final return. I said his final return, when he's coming back seven, seven years after the rapture. Here it is. Please listen. I'm not just going to be speaking of the rapture here. I'm not just going to be speaking of the events that take place in heaven. I'm not going to be speaking about the judgment seat of Christ here. I'm not just going to be speaking about the marriage supper of the Lamb and all the other things that are going to be taking place in eternity. Understand, when we are raptured, the Antichrist will be revealed, and everything in our world right now, as we sit in this church today, Everything in this globe called the world is promoting the coming of the Antichrist. If this Bible be true, and it is true, I'm talking technologically, all the social events. I'm talking about the one world government. I'm talking about the economy and the global currency and even the robots and AI, which is, of course, artificial intelligence that's appearing and they're having a battle over. But God has made it clear in Scripture to all of us, be aware and watch, for you know not what hour he's going to come. And I don't see very many Christians alert or aware or watching. We're so raptured and kept up, kept up in our own little realm of life that we don't see the prophetical things that God told us to watch and be aware of. We go on in our own certain ways and want to live our own certain way, and we don't take notice of what God said in the Bible that's true, and everything that he has said so far has come to pass as he said it. This Antichrist is going to come. He is the only begotten Son. Of Satan. He will be a wicked dictator based on your Bible. 
He will come from the Western European powers. He's not coming from the Middle East. He's not coming from Russia. He's not coming from China. He's not coming from Japan. He's, not, he's coming, listen to me, I believe he's coming from Rome. He's coming from the one that is called the Most Holy Father. The Bible does not even call Jesus the Most Holy Father, but they call the one in Rome the Most Holy Father. His name, you know what his name is that sits in Rome? It's on his mitre inside the band, and his name is given to him of the Roman name Vicarious Philae. Di. Look it up in the Roman, what the, what the one in the Vatican has on his band, what that vicarious Philae Di says and means in the Roman language. I'll give it to you. It means this, vicarious, substitute. Philae, son of. Di, where we get the word deity, God. Substitute Son of God. You need to study Ezekiel 38 and 39 and then study Daniel. And here's what God tells you in his book of truth. This inspired, perfect, and errant word of God, here's what he tells us. This Antichrist will become and is beginning to develop right now a defender of Israel. Here's what's happening. You can read it in your Bible. I read it, I studied it, and I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. He is going to be a defender of Israel, and that's developing this very moment as you and I sit in this church. And you see a number of the smaller nations, the Bible teaches, will march down with Russia to get the wealth of Israel. Here comes Iran. Here comes Iraq. Here comes Libya. Here comes Turkey. Here comes Syria, here comes Egypt, here comes Afghanistan, and all the others. You see, they want the wealth of Israel, and that's why Russia is in the news every single solitary day that you turn on your news. It's talking about Russia and China, and I'll talk about China in just a moment. But you see, the Dead Sea in Israel is totally and completely filled with wealth. It's the best there is for fertilization, it has valuable chemicals, and Israel is wealthy with many, many, many diamond mines. They have wealth of diamonds like you and I have never heard of. And not only that, but you'll find out that they have oil. They could supply the world with all the oil that we need. Israel. You know why? Because that's God's nation, and God has made Israel wealthy. When Russia is joined with all these other smaller nations that I mentioned to get this wealth of Israel, here's what's going to happen. The Western world will then come in defense of Israel. The United States of America is going to join the fight with the Western world to defeat Russia and the nations. It's in formation this right now. Watch your news. And you're seeing that it's forming slowly, but forming indeed. USA will not necessarily be concerned about Israel at that time. We're going to be concerned about Russia getting all of Israel's wealth. And there is, and listen, there will be World War III. It's in sight, it's even being spoken of, and that term is being used by our political world and our leaders of the world right now. They're talking about World War III. You can see it on the horizon. It's coming. It's about time God's people woke up and believed this book again. You're, you're in trouble. You're going to get it if you don't start believing this book. Jesus you're about to have your day. I see wars just like Jesus told us, and I see rumors of wars just like Jesus told us. I see the famines 
where people are dying and starving and earthquakes that are destroying and other events that are taking place that has never happened. They've happened in a, a little way, but now we're in a major way of all these things happening. Now listen to me. According to the Scripture, according to the Bible, if you want to know your Bible, the Antichrist and his confederacy is going to win the war that I just spoke about. He's going to win the war of Russia and all of the West. He's going to win it. If you read Ezekiel 38 and 39 and then go over to Amos and other different passages, he's going to win. The Antichrist is going to win that war. Then all of a sudden China and Japan and all the Eastern nations will enter into that war that was left. Listen, with Russia and the West, here comes the Eastern nations now to enter in. The Bible teaches this. They will come from the east, here's what it says, and the Euphrates River will be miraculously dried up. Can I give you a challenge? Would you go to any kind of a news area that you want and type in the Euphrates River and look at the, and ask for the condition of it? Did you know that the Euphrates River, that great major water, is almost now dried up? You don't hear anything about it, but the Euphrates River has almost fulfilled prophecy. It's almost all dried up. What does that tell you? If God says that that's going to happen so the eastern nations could come across to join in that war, then we are almost there. Jesus, you're about to have your day. The Bible teaches they will, they'll come from the east and the Western powers and the USA and others will join together. Now listen to me. The Antichrist and his armies will win. I hate to give you that bad news, but Daniel tells us they'll win. Ezekiel tells us they'll win. Jeremiah tells us that they'll win. And Zechariah tells us that they'll win. The Antichrist is going to win. It will be a massive war. And all powers of all nations will be engaged in that war. It's forming as I speak, as I said earlier. The Bible says it will take seven months. Are you listening now? I can tell you to read Ezekiel 39, verses 12 through 14, where the Bible tells us it'll take seven months for the, for the people to bury all the dead from those wars on the mountains of Israel. Thousands of employees are paid for gathering dead bodies of the Russians and others to bury because the Antichrist will win the war and there will be so many bodies it'll take seven months to find and bury the dead. If you believe your Bible, now if you really do believe your Bible, just read Ezekiel 39 verses 12 through 14 and it'll tell you that. Our problem is we don't believe the Bible. We're just letting the world slide and go to hell like nothing. And, and we don't even believe what God's told us to do to watch for and to be aware of so that we can make plans for our own personal lives and for our families, for our church, for our nation. We just let it go. Here's what I want you to understand. At this time when the Antichrist wins that war, <clears throat> he's going to be exalted. Listen now. He's going to be exalted to be king. He's going to be lifted up to be the ruler of the world. He's going to be in charge of all the earth. He will be worshipped. He'll have a throne in the temple in Jerusalem. And they will bring sacrifices like they did to God on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. They're going to be bringing them to the Antichrist based on your Bible. This will be the time the Antichrist is going to be the king over the earth. When he's exalted, listen to me now, when he's exalted as king of the earth and the whole world will be worshiping him, he will have conquered everything there is on this earth in every direction. In fact, in pride, he will stand and he'll look to the north and he will say, I conquered the north. He will stand and he will say to the west, I have conquered all the West. He will stand and he will say to the East, I have conquered everything in the East. 
he will stand and he will say, I have conquered everything in the South. He literally conquers the whole world. But there's one place he forgot to look. He forgot to look up. And he forgot to look up to the third floor. You see, there's the atmospheric heaven, there's the space heaven, then there's a heaven of heavens where God is, and he forgot to look up on the third floor because there is another king. And let me show you something. Go to the book of Revelation in chapter 19 and let me show you the event that's going to take place that'll shock the one who thinks that he's in charge. Revelation, and go to chapter 19, and I'll not spend a lot of time there, but I want you to see it. Revelation chapter 19, watch this. Verse number 11, here's what your Bible says about this event. As the Antichrist claims to be the ruler, owner, and in charge as king, here's what the Bible says. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies that we just talked about, which were in heaven, followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Jesus, you are about to have your day. Jesus will then be highly exalted. Above all, he'll be highly exalted, just as he deserves he will be highly exalted. He will ascend the royal stairway when he puts down the Antichrist and takes charge of the world. He will ascend the royal stairway of Mount Zion and he'll rule and reign for 1,000 years on this earth. Amen. Listen to me now. In our text, I want you to go to Philipp uh, go, yeah, Philippians chapter 2. That's where we want to end up. Go to Philippians chapter 2. In our text, Verses 9 through 11, we read where he is going to be, as it says in verse 9, highly exalted. You know what Paul is describing right here? How Jesus will have his day. How he will be highly exalted. He's not being highly exalted today. He's being put down. He's being used as a swear word. He's been disbelieved. He's been cruised, cursed, and criticized. He has been wickedly tested and, 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 and talked about. In our text, Paul tells us how he would be highly exalted, so I'm going to tell you. Here's how he will be exalted, highly exalted. Listen to me and just, just compare it with the Bible. Here's what it says. And this is a reason to shout. He, Jesus, who came the first time on a donkey, which was on a donkey, which is called the beast of peace. When he first came, bringing peace. But he's going to come, as we just read, on a white horse. And the Bible teaches us that a white horse is not the beast of peace, it's a beast of war. He's coming. He's going to have his day. He who came the first time to wear a crown of thorns, he wore a crown of thorns. He's going to come to wear a crown of royalty, a crown of glory, a crown of king of kings. He who came the first time and had his throne on a cross, 
His throne was on a cross. Will come the next time whose throne of power will be on Mount Zion. He whose scepter was a borrowed walking stick like a shepherd uses will come wielding a scepter of righteousness the next time, and that righteousness is the king of kings and lord of lords. Listen, take heart, believe the Bible. Just say it out loud with me. Jesus, you're about to have your day. And he is. Here's something else to think about. He who came the first time in a borrowed robe. When he comes the next time, as we just read, he'll be in a robe of righteousness. He who came and was crucified will come to be crowned. He who came to be trampled will come to trample. He who came as a lamb will come as a lion. He who came to submit is going to come to smite. He who came to be tried will come to be the judge of the universe and try everyone. He who came to die was going to come where he'll live forever. He who came to be jeered, the next time will come and be cheered. He who came to die on Mount Calvary will come to rule on Mount Zion. He who came to hear the angry mob crying, crucify him, crucify him. He's going to come to hear something different. He's going to hear all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Jesus is going to have his day. He came to surrender at Gethsemane, but he's going to come to conquer at Armageddon. He who came to a manger is now going to come to the palace. He who came as a savior is going to come as the sovereign. He who came as the stone the builders rejected is going to come as a stone cut out of, without hands to break in pieces all the kingdoms. He who came to be born in Bethlehem is going to come to rule in Jerusalem. He who came to humble himself will come to be exalted. He who came to have no reputation will come to have a name that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We are on the winning side. Bless God, I've been preaching now for 58, going on 59 years, and I get more hope every day that I've been on the right side of things, and I want to, I want to tell Jesus, Jesus, you're about to have your day. Now hear me. Does the Bible say that his name, in fact, look at it. Look over verse number 9 again of chapter 2 of Philippians. And given him a name which is above every name. You want to know something? I'm not throwing this out to anybody on purpose to get you upset. But I want you to know, I personally am against bumper stickers that have the name of Jesus and have the name of God on them. You know why? What does that bumper catch? When you're driving, you go through mud and snow. It throws mud and snow on the name of Jesus. And we Christians put that name. Now listen to me. When those that were the scribes that wrote our Bible, and it was time for them to put in print and print with their writing the name of God, Jehovah, Jesus, Lord, when they, had, when they came to that name, before they would print the name, they would put their quill down. They would go in and take off all their clothes. And they would wash their bodies and wash their hands before they came back and picked up the quill to write the name of Jesus. And you and I, we'll put it on the bumper sticker and let it catch all the mud, the filth, and the dirt, and the ungodliness, and let Jesus' name be in the mud. And they would just cleanse themselves before they would ever even print that name. He has a name given above every name. I'm saying, Jesus, you're going to have your day. His name is above every name. Let me ask you this. Was Jesus, is Jesus the Bible called a king? So he's going to have a name above all the kings. 
He'll have a name above King Nero, Herod, Pharaoh, above the Ramses, Darius, Nebuchadnezzar, Cyrus, Napoleon. He'll have a name above Charlemagne. He'll have a name above all of those that thought they were kings, Adolf Hitler, Titus, Muslim, above the Henrys, above the Jameses, a name of, of, above uh, King Saul, King David, King Solomon, King Rehoboam, King Jeroboam, King Asa, Jehoshaphat, Nadab, Elah, Zimri, Omni, Ahab, Hezael. He'll have a name above Jerome, Jehu, Jehoaz, Joash, Amaziah, Azariah, Uzziah, Zechariah, Shalom, Manasseh, Ahaz, Hezekiah, Ammon, Josiah, Jehoiakim, and Zedekiah. He'll have a name above all the names of all the kings. Hey, that is if your Bible's true. If your Bible's true, he's going to have a name above all the names. If your Bible's true, his, his, his name as king is going to be above all the other kings. Not only that, Jesus was a prophet. The Bible says he was a prophet. So he'll have a name above all the prophets, above the prophet Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Ammon, he'll have a name above Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk. he have a name above Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. Hey. Prophet Jesus, that's above every other name of the prophets. Hey. He'll have a name above all the apostles. In Hebrews chapter 3, uh, uh, verse number 1, it says Jesus was an apostle. So he'll have a name above all the apostles. He has one above the kings. He has one above the prophets. He don't have one above the apostles. The apostle Peter, Andrew, James the Great, John, Philip, Bartholomew, and Thomas, and Matthew, and James the Less, and Lebius, and Simeon, and Judas Iscariot, and Matthias, and even the apostle Paul. He'll have a name above all the apostles. That is, if your Bible's true. If you believe your Bible's true, he'll have a name above all the prophets, above all the kings, and above all the, uh, of all, all the apostles. He'll have a... a He'll, he's a judge, right? So we had judges listed in the Bible. He'll have a name above all the judges. Judge Othniel, Ehud, Shamgar, Deborah, Barak, Gideon, Tola, Zetha, Jer, Ibzan, Elon, Adon, Samson. He'll have a name above all the judges because he's the judge. He'll be number one. He'll be on top. He'll be the first. Jesus is about to have his day. He's going to have a name above. It's a name now in the gutter that we use for cuss words, and Hollywood has disgraced it, but he's going to have a name above every name. Is he a priest? Sure he is. He'll have a name above all the priests. Aaron, Eliezer, Abishah, Buckeye, Uzai, Zeruiah, Marioth, Amariah, Ahitub, Ahimez, Azariah, and Johanan, and all of the other priests. He'll have a name above all the priests. I'm going to ask you this. Is he a giant for our faith? Well, he'll have a name of all the other giants of the faith. Moses was a patriarch, but Jesus' name will be above Moses, above Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Aaron, Joshua, David. He'll be above all of the greats that we've known in, in the past that's been promoting the gospel for all these years, and they were great, like Moody, Tory, Spurgeon, Sunday, Rice, Roloff, Hiles, and all those others. He'll have a name above every name. He'll have a name above all the movements, like Calvinism, Calvin, Luther, Wesley, Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, Popes, Tom Malone, Joe Boyd, Lee Robertson, Curtis Hudson, Oliver B. Green, Bob Jones. He'll have a name above every name. Ladies and gentlemen, this moment when the battle has been fought and won by Jesus Christ, this moment when the Antichrist will be defeated, this moment is when he, Jesus, who was rejected, spit on, ridiculed, slandered, lied about, beaten, and crucified, will be exalted. His name will be above every name. He who, he who was trampled will trample. He left his throne in glory, but he'll be exalted to a throne and given a name above every name. Not only that, but let me show you something very quickly. You're in Philippians chapter 2. Look at verse 10. 
that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Every knee shall bow. You listen to me. When God says anything in the Bible, he means exactly the way he said it. Did he say every knee? God doesn't intend for you to bow one knee. Every knee will bow. Every knee. And if you've not been bowing your knee, I'm going to tell you one thing. If you've not been bowing it to Jesus Christ, you better get in practice because you are going to have your knee to bow to Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, when I read my Bible, I find those who's going to have every knee bow to Jesus. I find that bin Laden, Saddam Hussein, Arafat, Sharon, Mahmoud, Larry Flint, that smut publisher, Larry Keene, that liberal, Hugh Hefner, that playboy publisher. Every knee will bow. Their knees will bow. Adolf Hitler's knee, Michael Jackson's knees, Elizabeth Taylor's knees, Jane Fonda's knees, Ted Turner's knees, Phil Donahue's knees, Britney Spears' knees, Oprah Winfrey's knees, Jerry Springer's knees, Madonna's knees, the Beatles' knees, Arnold Schnort, uh, Schwarzenegger, uh, will, his knees will bow, Donald Trump's knees will bow, Ted Kennedy's knees will bow, Al Gore's knees, Madeline Murray's Mary O'Hara, the atheist knees, Bill Gates knees, Bob Ingersoll's knees, Muhammad Ali's knees, all the Catholic post, popes of the past and now the present's knees, the Seventh-day Adventist knees, the liberals knees, the Mormons knees, the Muslims knees, the Jehovah Witnesses knees, Satan worshippers knees, Elvis Presley's knees, and of course the feminists, the prostitutes, the atheists, the communists, Frank Sinatra's, all the Hollywood stars as they're called, all the rock stars, even, even Bill Clinton's knees, even Hillary's knees will bow. And Biden's knees will bow. Hey, listen, if that Bible's true, every knee. I said, if that Bible's true, every knee. That means yours and all of these. Every liberal seminary professor's knee will bow. Every liquor dealer's knee, knees will bow. Every drug promoter's knees will bow. Michael Jordan's knees will bow. All the professional sports knees. And I'm talking about... Rodman, El Elway, I won't go into the list, but I got a list of all of them. Something else will happen at the moment Jesus is exalted. Not only will he be given a name above every name, but if you look at it very closely in Philippians chapter 2, in verse number 11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every tongue one day, those in hell, those on earth, those in heaven, it makes no difference who they are. Every tongue is going to confess, Jesus, you are Lord. And they'll do it on a bended knee. Oh, yes. Every tongue will confess that he's Lord to the glory of God. Bin Laden, your tongue is going to confess Jesus is Lord. Everyone. Bless God, I'm going to stand back and watch and listen to every single one of them because I, I already do it and I'll do it then, but I'm already one that bows my knees and I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'll say one day to all those, I'll say it regretfully. We old-fashioned Bible-believing fundamental Baptists we were right. We were right. Did you know on that day that Zondervan will have to confess that there's only one Bible? Did you know that Fosdick, the liberal, will have to confess of the virgin birth because he denied it? Did you know that John MacArthur, who sa said that the blood just went into the ground, John MacArthur is going to have to preach a series on the blood? Did you know on that day Madeline Murray O'Hara will believe and say there is a God? 
Did you know that the Pharisees and the hypocrites will say, Jesus, I'm sorry, I believe in you now? Did you know the Sadducees will believe in the resurrection? Did you know that the Pope will admit that only Jesus can forgive sins? Did you know that the Rolling Stones will say, Jesus, you're the rock? And did you know that Thomas Paine will admit the blood atonement? Did you know that Brigham Young and Joseph Smith will proclaim they were liars and that there's only one Bible and that the Mormon church is nothing more than just a cult? Did you know the Jewish rabbis will confess that Jesus is the Messiah? Did you know that Zondervan, who printed the NIV, is going to have to confess that it was wrong? Thomas Nelson, who put out the New King James Version, will have to confess that it was wrong. Did you know that Oxford, who put out the, the unbelievable New Schofield, that they'll have to confess it's wrong? Did you know the Southern Baptists, who gave us the Living Bible, they'll have to confess that it was wrong? Did you know the Na National Council of Churches, who put out the RSV, will have to confess that it's wrong? They will all, with their tongue, admit and confess there's only one Bible, there's only one God, and Jesus is the one. And I think focus on the family will have to focus on Jesus. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. I'm about done, but let me just give you a couple other thoughts. John MacArthur, who I said, says that the blood went into the ground that Jesus shed on the cross. On this day that Jesus will be exalted, with his tongue, he may have to say, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Amen. Ted Kennedy is going to sing, Shall we gather at the river? <laughs> Hugh Hefner's going to have to sing, Yield not to temptation. Liberace the queer will sing, Straight is the way. <laughs> or Roberts will sing, Blessed assurance, because he didn't believe in eternal security. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Madeline Murray O'Hara will sing, A mighty fortress is our God. Judas Iscariot will say, Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Bill Clinton will have to sing, I'm in the army now. <laughs> he was a draft dodger. I'm simply trying to say that one of these days, Jesus is going to have his day. And when he comes, Every church on this earth is going to be converted into a fundamental independent Baptist church. Yes. Smut and porn printers will have to print King James Bibles. Amen. And since we will rule, we're going to make Bill Clinton be drafted. <laughs> we're going to make Hillary stay at home and bake him some cookies and some brownies. And instead of her being in white water, we're going to put our hands in dishwater. Instead of making money, which is called dough, we're going to make her have and make some dough, which is going to be the bread dough. And we're going to teach Ted Kennedy how to drive across bridges. And we're going to get Obama and Biden for one time and for the first time to tell the truth. Oh, my soul. Think of it. Jesus, King of Kings. Now hear me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm through. But I want you to hear me, and I want you to, in your heart, say it too. Jesus, you're about to have your day. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. And your name is going to be above every name. You are our Lord, Savior, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you are our God. And when you come back and win the war over the Antichrist, all of these things are going to take place. And Father, thank you for allowing me to be part of what's going to take place. Question. Have you ever had your knees bow? Truly. Now listen to me. Have you ever had your knees bowed? 
and have your mouth open with your tongue confessing that you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and accept him into your heart so that you will not be part of the wicked part of the Antichrist, but you'll be part of the great part of Jesus Christ. And you go to heaven and rejoice and spend eternity loving and praising God forever. And if you have never, ever had a time, listen, the Bible says you must be born again. I'm done, but listen to me. The Bible says you must be born, born, born again. That means on a certain date, you were born into your mom and dad's family. You got a birth certificate at your birth. And on that birth certificate, it gave the date and the time that you were born into your parents' family. And if you must be born again, and God said it eight times in John chapter 3, if God said you must be born again, then you need to have a date, a place, and a time where you bowed your knees and believed and accepted Jesus Christ to become part of his family. If you don't have a time and if you don't have a place and if your tongue has never asked him to save you, I'm telling you, right now is the time. You need to do it.